In this video, we're going to look at the effects of spinning on the natural frequencies of a metal disc. And this here is a, a image of a brake rotor, and we're going to kind of notionally pattern it after this. So we're just going to simulate this uh, radial portion here and assume that that's pretty rigidly fixed in the middle and not contributing much to the dynamics of the uh, of the rotor. May not be true, but the key here is to uh, to just compare the, the frequencies and illustrate the impact of the pre-stress on this case. Uh, so this time I've elected to create a geometry separately um, and then we'll add our, sec our other elements to that. Um, probably a, a static structural to be able to do preloads and then we'll do a modal analysis that's both uh, connected, one that does not use the pre-stress, and then one that does use the pre-stress. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and uh, start with the, with the geometry, and I'm going to make this in space claim. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, create that geometry in space claim. Um, I'm going to pick the XY plane, go ahead and orient it neg normal to that. And let's set our space claim options, uh, particularly our units. And then uh, we'll come back. So I've created this in terms of millimeters. And we're just going to be modeling a, uh, a simple disk here. So we will. Um, Create two circles. Okay, so we'll start it at the center, and I want this to be 140 millimeters. So I hit the space bar, 40, and then do that again. So at the center, space bar, and we'll make that one two. 80. So simple geometry. Let's go ahead and um, we're going to pull that. Rotate it so you can see what's going on in space. And let's make that 8 millimeters. Pretty thick. Uh, we'd like to see some, expect to see some pretty high frequencies. Now I could do this with the solid model. Uh, but this is a large uh, thin plate, and so I'm going to look at this with a shell model, be a little more computationally uh, efficient. So I'll select the mid surface, select one surface, select the other surface, my green arrows lit up, hit OK, and now I've put that, um, and now I see the um, this mid surface there, and it's automatically suppressed the shell for physics, or the solid for so it doesn't import it into the analysis. And that's fine in this case. Not planning to use that. So I just have my surface there and it looks like I've got a spare surface that was created in the center. And I'm going to go ahead and, and suppress that as well. And I'll uncheck it so it's not displayed. Right. So we have our we have geometry ready to go. Let's go ahead and go ahead and save that. We may want to use that for a starting point for another analysis. Then we'll close this and, and open up ANSYS Mechanical. Right, so I'm going to leave my engineering data as is, just using a basic structural steel uh, since this is a demo. Obviously for real analysis you'd want to choose uh, your properties carefully. And I would also point out um, I've opened it up from this model, but really I can I can work from a lot of points in here. Once again, ANSYS Mechanical, um, we'll see that all of those segments populate. Okay, so um, <coughs> for the static structural, I need to start by, I guess it makes sense to start with my mesh. Um, and we have our coordinate system right in the center, so that's convenient. I don't need to create a new coordinate system. Let's create a mesh. Um, Let's go ahead and just see what our default mesh looks like. Right. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty coarse. Um, let's go ahead and 
adjust the uh, adjust the sizing. I'm going to go ahead and create a mesh control sizing. I'm just going to select that face, um, apply that, and then I'll set element size of I think it's in inches. It's a little smaller than we need it. Let's take a look at that. Show mesh. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, we can always revisit that later if we need to. You see, even though this is my geometry is a mid surface, um, it goes ahead and creates this as a it shows the thickness of the part. Um, this is one case where you're not trying to get multiple elements to the thickness, uh, and you can't uh, because you're modeling just the mid surface and uh, and then reflecting the thickness in that. So now we can come in here and we can create our supports. Um, so let's start. And we're going to select that interior surface. Remember, I have to select a line because it's not really a face. Um, so apply that. So I've got that interior fixed. And then we're going to apply our inertial um, rotational velocity. Again, that's going to default to the zero, 0 point. So that's good. Um, and I'm going to select my components and we'll rotate this. It's going to be about the Z axis. Um, and I'll put, uh, uh, now for a, for a standard, so I'm going to put in, um, we'll put in a hundred there, uh, for starters. So that's about a thousand RPM. Um, and that corresponds to, um, if you're thinking of this in terms of brake rotor in a car, um, that's corresponding to about 40 to 50 miles per hour. Let's see. Yeah, about, about 50 miles per hour probably. So we've created that. I want to look at this. I may be interested in my stresses at the center. Uh, now I can create my modal. Now there's no pre-stress here, so I need to set my boundary conditions again. Um, so let's let's try the fixed support first. Like that. Um, so now it's fully constrained, and that's adequate for the modal analysis. Um, I don't need, need to apply any forces in this case. In fact, it won't let me. Um, so we just need our outputs. So I can. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plot stresses this time. Um, you can actually do a variety of things to get these results, but let me go ahead and duplicate. Okay. Duplicate, and we'll set these up so we get the first uh, four modes. Setting we're getting six modes. Okay, and then for our pre stress, um, I have my loads from up there. So again, I can just create, um, and I'll do deformation this time. Um, now, I hadn't tried putting stress in here before, and it doesn't seem like it's going to like that. So I'm going to suppress these and just delete them. Right. And we'll create some deformation plots. Maybe we'll actually make this directional. Um, so let's look at the displacement in the the Z axis. Um, see how much out of plane motion we're getting. Um, so that's the first axis. Let's go ahead and duplicate. 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 And second. Third. 
And since we're doing there, we'll want to compare it. I'll go ahead and create that for the pre-stress case. Okay, so we've got these all created, um, and we should be ready to solve. So I'll go ahead and that run and start this again when it's finished. Okay, so we're back. Um, let's look at the stresses first. It's kind of as expected, um, because I fixed this into your surface. And there tends to be higher stresses there anyway, uh, but that's exaggerated, exacerbated. Um, and that might be something to consider revising if I was going to improve the accuracy of this instead of fixing it in the radial direction. Um, but we, we see the stresses, um, they're quite low, um, 84 PSI, uh, so we might guess that we're not going to have enough frequency to, um, to make a difference. But let's look at our frequency. So our directional deformation, oh, we just solved that case. Let me solve the, the modal analysis. That's why that's solving, we can look at the other case. So we have Deformation. So our first mode is going to be in and out of plane. Um, second mode is showing up as being identical. Oh, that's why, because I didn't change which ones we were getting there. Right, let's look at them in the directional deformation. So one, two, you see, that's kind of a, uh, a wonky mode there. Um, three is, you notice two and three are very close in frequencies, and they're very similar shapes, uh, just at a different orientation. They're sort of the opposite. Or it's like they're rotated 90 degrees from each other. But that's, that can happen in these uh, modal frequencies. Um, and then four... Um, is clearly a, a different mode. So let's look at what happened with our other case. So oh, again, I didn't uh, update these frequencies, uh, which ones is assigned to that one. So let's go ahead and I would result. Right, so it's the same mode. We get the same modes there. Okay, so they're the same modes throughout, same modal shape. So let's compare frequencies. So I have 1279.8 and 1280.1. Let's go to the higher frequencies. Sometimes they're more affected. So 1794.2 without the pre-stress and 1794.4 with it. So clearly uh, not uh, a big impact here in terms of shifting the frequencies um, for this relatively thick part. Now, just to see, we could come back here to the mid-surface, and I can, this is a nice thing here, I can go ahead and adjust the thickness. And maybe let's make this uh, point 0.1. And you see that updated the thickness, and let's solve, and we'll see, uh, see what the impact of that is on our frequencies. And we'll solve the last one. Right. So my frequencies um, I believe have come down quite a bit, yes. We've come down quite a bit from thickness, as we'd expect. Um, we have a 411 hertz, roughly. And then with the preload, um, we, get, we, only, we see a pretty small change there. In the, so so not, uh, still not larger, but still not a significant effect um, in these circumstances. Um, uh, likely, if we increased our rotational velocity significantly, say 
to a to a thousand, uh, we begin to see it. But that illustrates the process, which is the the key key item here, um, and should be close to what you're going to be doing on your project in the, in the class. <coughs> I'd like to say a word about symmetry here as well. Um, geometrically, this is um, symmetric, and we could. We could cut this in half, we could cut a quarter, we could cut a 10 degree slice, but that would affect the modes that can be assimilated because now the modes that are calculated have to be symmetric. So this is an axis symmetric mode. So any um, slice um, sl through, uh, through the center here, a radial slice, would still find this mode. Now, in contrast, we look at this second mode, there is no symmetry here. And so if you were to section this even in half, you wouldn't find that mode. Um, okay, and that's a similar mode. Uh, now this one, you could, uh, you could, you know, we could take a quarter model and it would still get this mode. But if I had done a quarter model, so they cut through here and here. I would only see mode four and mode one um, of those first four modes. And so you need to be really careful when you're applying symmetry conditions with modal analysis. <coughs>